There are three reasons why Argentinosaurus should have been impossible. First, its 100 ton weight exceeded every theoretical limit for terrestrial animals. Second, its 115 foot length created structural stresses that should have snapped its spine. Third, its massive size required feeding strategies that seemed unsustainable. Yet this giant thrived for millions of years in Cretaceous Argentina, and the secret lies in three revolutionary adaptations, hollow vertebrae that created strength without weight, pillar-like legs positioned for perfect weight distribution, and a specialized gait that allowed efficient movement despite its enormous mass. In 1987, a single vertebra discovered by farmer Guillermo Heredia was so massive that paleontologists initially refused to believe it came from one animal. Heredia was working his land near Plaza Huincul in Argentina's Nuquem province when he stumbled across what he thought was petrified wood. The bone was unlike anything found before standing nearly as tall as a human being and weighing several hundred pounds. When word reached the scientific community, many experts dismissed the find as either multiple bones fused together or a hoax designed to fool researchers. The discovery site sat in the heart of Patagonia's fossil-rich badlands where erosion had exposed layers of 100 million year old rock. Plaza Huincul had already yielded impressive dinosaur remains, but nothing approached the scale of Heredia's find. The vertebra measured 62.6 inches tall and 50.8 inches wide dimensions that shattered every known record for terrestrial animals. Most paleontologists had never seen bone structure of this magnitude and the implications were staggering. If authentic, this single bone suggested the existence of a creature that exceeded all theoretical limits for land-dwelling animals. Jose Bonaparte, Argentina's leading dinosaur expert, traveled to the site with colleague Rodolfo Coria to investigate the controversial discovery. Bonaparte had spent decades studying South American dinosaurs, but even his experienced eye struggled to process the vertebra's dimensions. The bone's vertebral centrum measured 22.4 inches in width, indicating an animal of unprecedented size. Traditional comparative anatomy techniques failed completely when researchers tried to scale up from known sauropods. No existing dinosaur provided a reliable reference point for estimating the creature's total size or weight. The fragmentary nature of the remains intensified the scientific debate surrounding the discovery. Beyond the massive vertebra, only scattered pieces emerged from the excavation site. Several back vertebrae parts of a sacrum, a complete femur, and the shaft of another thigh bone comprised the entire collection. This incomplete evidence made reconstruction nearly impossible using standard paleontological methods. Scientists argued over the vertebra's exact position within the spinal column and whether accessory articulations between vertebrae could have supported such enormous weight. The lack of a complete skeleton left crucial questions unanswered about the animal's proportions and biomechanics. Opposition from the paleontological community reached its peak when researchers calculated the structural stresses involved in supporting such mass. Traditional bone architecture seemed inadequate for the loads this uh, vertebra suggested. Critics argued that no terrestrial animal could have functioned with this level of structural demand. The debate raged in scientific journals with some researchers questioning whether the bone represented a genuine biological discovery or a statistical anomaly that didn't reflect actual living animals. Computer modeling became the breakthrough tool that validated Heredia's discovery when traditional methods failed. Researchers used digital reconstruction techniques to analyze the vertebra's internal structure and stress distribution patterns. The models revealed sophisticated engineering solutions within the bone tone itself, including hollow chambers that reduced weight while maintaining strength. These biomechanical analyses provided the first concrete evidence that such massive creatures could have existed and functioned effectively. The turning point came when excavations uncovered a 98.4 inch femur that perfectly matched the vertebra's proportions. This thigh bone, nearly twice the length of any previously discovered dinosaur femur, confirmed that the vertebra belonged to a single impossibly large animal. 
The femur's robust construction and specialized joint surfaces demonstrates evolutionary adaptations specifically designed for supporting extreme weight loads. This single bone discovery forced scientists to completely reimagine the limits of terrestrial life and evolutionary engineering. The vertebra represented more than just a size record. It revealed that evolution had solved structural problems that human engineers still found challenging. The ancient forests of Cretaceous Argentina had somehow supported creatures that pushed biology to its absolute limits. Every structural engineer will tell you that scaling up a building requires completely different architecture. The same principle applied to Argentinosaurus. When you double the height of a skyscraper, you can't simply use twice as much of the same materials. The structural demands increase exponentially, forcing architects to redesign everything from the foundation to the steel framework. Evolution faced this identical challenge when creating a creature that weighed as much as 16 elephants standing on four legs. Argentinosaurus confronted three fundamental engineering problems that no terrestrial animal had ever solved at this scale weight distribution, structural integrity and efficient movement. The first challenge involved supporting 176,000 pounds without the legs collapsing or sinking into the ground. The second required building a skeleton strong enough to resist the enormous forces generated by such mass during movement. The third demanded creating a locomotion system that could propel this living mountain without tearing itself apart. The mathematics revealed an impossible situation when researchers calculated the structural demands using conventional bone architecture. Traditional solid bone construction would have created a skeleton so heavy that the animal couldn't have lifted its own body weight. The stress forces acting on the spine during normal movement would have exceeded the fracture limits of standard bone material. Even the simplest actions, like lifting the head to feed, would have generated enough torque to snap the vertebral column in half. Evolution solution involved air-filled chambers within each vertebra creating biological scaffolding that was both strong and lightweight. This camelate bone structure worked like the internal framework of modern airplane wings or cellular materials used in aerospace engineering. The chambers reduced the skeleton's overall weight while maintaining structural integrity through strategic placement of bone material only where maximum strength was needed. These hollow spaces weren't random voids, but precisely engineered cavities that distributed stress loads across the entire vertebral structure. The leg architecture differed fundamentally from other dinosaur limb designs through its pillar-like construction optimized for weight distribution. Four thick columnar legs positioned directly beneath the body's centre of mass created a stable platform that could bear unprecedented loads. Unlike the more graceful limbs of smaller dinosaurs built for speed and agility, these robust supports functioned like the structural columns in large buildings. Each leg measured several feet in circumference and featured specialised joint surfaces designed to handle the enormous compressive forces generated by the animal's weight. The dorsal ribs contributed to this engineering marvel through their tubular cylindrical design that created a robust yet flexible framework for the massive torso. While most sauropods possessed flattened ribs, Argentinosaurus evolved cylindrical structures that provided superior strength to weight ratios. These ribs functioned like the curved supports in cathedral architecture, distributing the weight of internal organs across the entire chest cavity while maintaining enough flexibility for breathing and movement. These adaptations worked together as an integrated system rather than isolated features creating a biomechanical masterpiece that solved problems human engineers still struggle with today. The hollow vertebrae reduced weight while the pillar legs provided stability and the cylindrical ribs created a flexible cage that protected vital organs without adding unnecessary mass. Hypersphene hypantrum articulations between vertebrae added additional rigidity to the spine, strengthening the connections between individual bones to resist the stresses of movement. These anatomical innovations created a living structure that could support unprecedented terrestrial mass while maintaining functionality. The engineering principles that governed Argentinosaurus anatomy continue to influence modern structural design from lightweight construction materials to load-bearing architectures. 
But understanding how this massive framework was built only raises the next question, how did such an enormous creature actually move through its ancient world? Computer models revealed that Argentinosaurus moved with a unique gait never seen in any other animal living or extinct. Scientists used laser scans of skeletal reconstructions at the Museo Carmen Funes to create digital simulations that could analyze the biomechanics of this massive creature. The computational approach represented a breakthrough in paleontology, moving beyond simple anatomical comparisons to actually simulate how these ancient giants functioned in their daily lives. Determining how a 100 ton animal could move efficiently without destroying itself or its environment presented researchers with unprecedented challenges. Traditional methods of studying dinosaur locomotion relied on fossilized trackways and anatomical analysis, but neither approach could adequately address the extreme biomechanical demands of supporting such enormous mass. The computer modeling process incorporated muscle properties based on comparisons with the living animals creating a virtual Argentinosaurus that could be tested under various movement scenarios. This digital reconstruction allowed scientists to explore questions that had remained unanswered for decades. The paradox became clear when researchers examined the creature's daily survival requirements. Argentinosaurus needed to move constantly for feeding while being too massive for conventional locomotion patterns. The animal required enormous quantities of vegetation to sustain its metabolism, potentially consuming the equivalent of an entire forest canopy each day. Yet, moving such tremendous weight across varied terrain without causing structural damage to bones and joints seemed biomechanically impossible using standard quadrupedal gaits observed in smaller animals. The breakthrough came when computer algorithms calculated a maximum speed of four, five miles per hour, and discovered the specialized pace gate that made this movement possible. Unlike the alternating limb patterns used by most quadrupeds, Argentinosaurus moved its fore and hind limbs on the same side simultaneously. This pace gate provided crucial stability for an animal operating at the absolute limits of terrestrial biomechanics. The synchronized movement pattern distributed weight optimally across the skeletal framework, preventing joint collapse while minimizing energy expenditure during locomotion. The pace gate functioned as an evolutionary solution to the mechanical constraints imposed by extreme size. When the fore and hind limbs on one side moved together, they created a stable tripod effect with the opposite legs, ensuring that the massive body remained balanced throughout each stride. This gait pattern had never been observed in any other animal species living or extinct, making Argentinosaurus truly unique in the history of terrestrial locomotion. The computer models demonstrated that this specialized movement was not just possible but necessary for the creature's survival. The long neck served dual functions as both a feeding tool and a counterbalance for the massive body during movement. While the animal moved slowly through its territory, the extended neck allowed it to access vegetation across a wide area without repositioning the entire body. This feeding strategy optimized energy expenditure by reducing the metabolic costs of constant movement. The neck's length also provided dynamic balance, shifting weight distribution as the animal navigated different terrains and feeding positions. Metabolic efficiency became the key factor that made Argentinosaurus viable as a living organism. The creature's enormous caloric requirements demanded precise optimization of every energy expenditure. The pace gate combined with the next feeding advantages created a system where anatomy movement and feeding strategy worked in perfect harmony. Evolution had produced a perfectly calibrated biological machine that could sustain unprecedented size while maintaining functional effectiveness. This engineering marvel demonstrates that life consistently finds ways to exceed theoretical limits, pushing the boundaries of what seems biomechanically possible on Earth. Argentinosaurus represents evolution's masterpiece of biological engineering, a living proof that life finds ways to exceed every theoretical limit. This creature solved structural problems that modern engineers still struggle with. Today, creating solutions that seem impossible yet function perfectly for millions of years. The fossil record likely contains other equally impossible creatures waiting to be discovered. Animals that push the boundaries of physics and biology in ways we haven't yet imagined. Understanding these ancient giants helps us appreciate both 
the ingenuity of evolution and the mysteries still buried beneath our feet, reminding us that nature's solutions often surpass human engineering.